fourth and fifth grade Jefferson students. It's Miss Golden. I miss you so much. I wish that I was talking to you in person, but we can't. So I'm really glad for technology right now. I'm super grateful for YouTube so I can record this and send it to you. I miss you and I'm sure I will see you soon. So today what we're gonna talk about is worry, feeling anxious, feeling worried. Raise a quiet hand if you have felt worried or anxious. Remember, anxious is when you are worried about what might happen in the future. Super normal feeling, okay? Everybody feels worried sometimes, everybody feels anxious. You might even feel that a little bit more right now because a lot has changed in your life. You're stuck at home, right? You may be happy about that. There may be some things you really love about that, but there's a lot going on in the world. So today we're gonna to talk about how to deal with worry and anxiety. But first I wanna read you a book. You may have heard it before. It's one of my favorites, okay? What would you do with a problem? This is gonna be a good starting point to figure out what do we do when we start to feel worried and anxious? What do you do with a problem? This is written by Kobe Yamada. I don't know how it happened, but one day I had a problem. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. I really didn't like having a problem, but it was there. Why is it here? What does it want? What do you do with a problem? I thought. I wanted to make it go away. I shoot it. I scowled at it. I tried ignoring it, but nothing worked. Look at that worry. I started to worry about my problem. What if it swallows me up? What if my problem snacks? No, sorry. What if my problem sneaks up and gets me? What if it takes away all of my things? I worried a lot. I worried about what would happen. I worried about what could happen. I worried about this and worried about that. Look super worried. And the more I worried, the bigger my problem became. I wished it would just disappear. I tried everything I could to hide from it. I even found ways to disguise myself, but it still found me. And the more I avoided my problem, the more I saw it everywhere. I thought about it all the time. I didn't feel good at all. I couldn't take it anymore. This has to stop, I declared. Maybe I was making my problem bigger and scarier than it actually was. After all, my problem hadn't really swallowed me up or attacked me. I realized that I had to face it. So even though I didn't want to, even though I was really afraid, I got ready and I tackled my problem. When I got face to face with it, I discovered something. My problem wasn't what I thought it was. I discovered it had something beautiful inside. My problem held an opportunity. It was an opportunity for me to learn and to grow, to be brave, to do something. It showed me that it was important to look closely because some opportunities only come once. So now I see problems differently. I'm not afraid of them anymore because I know their secret. Every problem has an opportunity for something good. You just have to look for it.
Raise your hand if you've had a problem before or if you're having a problem right now, right? Okay, and you're worried about it, okay? We're all finding ourselves in a different situation right now and that can create problems. It can also create worry and feelings of anxiety, okay? Just like our friend here in this book. So we're gonna talk about three things that you can do when you start to feel worried or when you have a problem and you feel like you can't face it because you're so worried about it or you're so anxious about it, which is a feeling you have when you feel like you can't control what might happen in the future, okay? And can you control what happens in the future? Probably not, right? But you can control a few things, okay? So one of those things that you can control is positive self-talk. I've talked to you about this a lot, right? We're gonna talk about it again today in a way where I give you an idea of how to practice positive self-talk at home, okay? So I want you all to make an I'm grateful list. So here's mine. I'm grateful for my family, my dog, especially right now because I'm home with him all the time, coffee, a yummy breakfast. I had an especially good breakfast this morning. The reason why I put that on is because I want to share with you that it is okay to put little things on there. It's important to be grateful for little things, okay? It can change your mindset so that you're not so worried. Number five, my house. I feel really lucky to have a house right now, especially because we're supposed to be inside almost all the time. And number six, I'm super grateful for the Jefferson community. I've been meeting with all of your teachers. We've been doing a lot of talking. Everybody cares so much about you and we're all working hard together. So I'm super grateful for all of these things. So the more you write down what you're grateful for, the more positive self-talk you're going to get used to and the more you're gonna have in your pocket. So I like to do a grateful list every single day. And it can just be two things or three things. Today I had six things. Okay? But I want you to get into the practice of this so that you can squash that worry down a little bit more. Okay? The next thing that would really help your worry and anxiety, okay, if you're worried or anxious about something, is called handprint breathing. Raise a quiet hand if you've heard of that before. So we've done a lot of belly breathing, right? We've done the smell the flower, blow out the candle. I just learned about a new one too that I'm gonna teach you in a moment, but this belly breathing has to do with your hand, okay? So you're gonna stretch out your hand like this, okay? And with the pointer finger of your other hand, you're gonna go like this. Up your finger, down your finger. Up your finger, oops, down your finger. And every time you go up with this finger, up the finger on this hand, you're going to breathe in through your nose, and then when you go down, out through your mouth. Five finger breathing, or some people call it hand breathing. Let's do it together right now, okay? So. That feels much more relaxed. breathing okay so that's one way to deal with feelings of anxiety a lot of people start to get hot when they start to feel anxious or their heart beats fast or they get a stomach ache that's me when I'm feeling anxious or worried my stomach almost always hurts so that's my clue I need to do my five finger breathing and think about what I'm grateful for so I stop thinking about what I'm so worried about okay the last strategy that we're gonna talk about today for dealing with worry and anxiety is called count it out okay it's one of my favorites so if you're feeling anxious right it can it can be really hard to get your mind off of it in fact sometimes when you're feeling anxious or worried it feels literally impossible to take it off your mind right it's the only thing you're thinking about but you can force yourself to think about other things one really easy thing you can do anywhere that you are especially at home right now okay or maybe you're outside on a walk a short walk in your neighborhood is to have a special game called count it out, okay? So what you do is you simply count the things around you, okay? So you either can say to yourself, I'm gonna count the number of shoes that I can see. I'm in my bedroom, I see a lot of shoes. I can count probably up to 20 or 30. I really like shoes. Or if you're outside, you can count the number of birds that you hear 
or you can simply just count the number of things that are around you, okay? I get anxious when I go to the airport. So what I always do with my count it game is I count the number of people around me. Sometimes I count the number of shoes too, okay? So counting it out can really help. You can count people, you can count cars, anything, books if you're inside your house, okay? So today we talked about feeling worried and anxious. Does everybody feel worried and anxious sometimes? Absolutely, okay? Can you use some tools and strategies to help you get through it? For sure. So there are three things we talked about for getting through worry and anxiety today. The first one was what? What are you grateful for, okay? Try to think about that every single day. Try to write a list every single day. Second thing, five finger or hand breathing. Remember, in, out. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Sometimes you need to do it twice or three times. Third thing, count it out game, okay? Just think of this as a fun game. This is something you can do anywhere that you are when you start to feel worried or anxious. Count the things around you. Great job today, fourth and fifth graders. I really do miss seeing you so, so much, but look out for my videos coming out every week to help you deal with a different feeling or a different problem so I can help you get through it while you're at home and while I'm at home. See you later.